So a lot of people have been saying that Trey Turner is the best shortstop in baseball, and I'm pretty sure that Fernando Tatis Jr. heard those fans saying that because he embarrassed Trey twice yesterday. The first occasion was when he tagged on a shallow pop-up to left field and he was safe, and then the second instance was when he juked out Trey Turner and he was dead in the water, and all of a sudden, he's safe, he's on third base, and Trey Turner is kind of standing there like, how is he doing this? But what's going on everyone? It's Fuzzy. Welcome back to yet another MLB recap. Um, unfortunately, we still have to talk about that Padres versus Nationals game because some really horrible things happened at the end of it. So the game was suspended. I believe that they're going to make up the rest of that game today. There was a lot of suspended games yesterday. Some of them due to incidences off the field. Some of them due to the weather and everything like that. So kind of a weird MLB recap. And also to anyone that was affected in the DC area, my heart goes out to you. Being from Las Vegas, anytime something like that happens, I just get, you know, bad flashbacks. So again, my heart and prayers go out to anyone affected in DC. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about, yesterday the Padres were up 8-4, to four, but again, baseball is secondary in these situations. All of a sudden, there were some popping and some loud noises over in left field, and it was from a drive-by. Yes, there are some sick people in this world. I don't understand why this keeps on happening, but it did happen. Fernando Tatis Jr. and Manny Machado, they were lauded yesterday because they came out of the dugout. Yes, they were going for their family at first, but they allowed fans Nationals fans to come in the dugout and you know seek safe haven and I just wanted to applaud Tatis and Machado because a lot of people were saying yo they weren't caring about the fans they only went for their family well then explain this picture right here I don't see one Padres fan so I really tip my cap to Tatis and Machado and again to anyone affected my thoughts are out for you guys. Moving on over to another suspended game, but obviously this one was due to the weather. We have the Marlins versus the Phillies. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and show the final inning because Ranger Suarez, he's been really good except for that one pitch to Jesus Aguilar. So the Phillies blow their 23rd game already, their 23rd blown save, I should say, of the season. A franchise record is 25, so they're two away from tying the blown save record for the Phillies franchise, and I think that they're going to beat that. So that game was suspended, and another game that was affected by inclement weather. We have the Yankees versus the Red Sox. We have Jaron Duran collecting his first big league hit in his debut, and then he shows off the speed by scoring on a Christian Arroyo single. Then you have DJ LeMayu tying it up at 1 AP, so he is trying to get hot and stay hot. You have Nathan Ovalli going five innings with two hits and seven strikeouts, and Garrett Cole, geez, one earned run on 11 strikeouts, and then here's kind of where the game fell apart. You have Alex Verdugo getting hit in the back by a baseball. Now, you might be asking asking yourself, how does that happen? A fan chucked the baseball, they said yeet, and they hit Alex Verdugo while he is working. I want you guys to put yourself in Verdugo's shoes. You're simply working at your job and all of a sudden a baseball hits you in the back. That's not going to feel great and that's also not proper behavior. Even Yankees fans were saying, get him out the ballpark, we don't condone that. So I was a little bit surprised to see that because I thought maybe Yankees fans were going to condone that behavior, but to my surprise, they didn't. So good job, New York. And even though there was a few fights and it was, yeah, it was a weird game. Now, ultimately, the Yankees were gifted a W on a silver platter because Gary and Glaber go back to back and then a huge gift from the baseball gods. This game should have been called way before it even started, even though a lot of Yankees fans were like, hey, it's sunny out. Start the game. Well, they couldn't finish the game because they knew the weather was going to get really bad. And the Yankees, they kind of get a free win because the Red Sox couldn't make the comeback. All right. So let's talk about the walk-offs from yesterday. We have the Pirates versus the Mets. Now, actually, Speaking of the Mets, let's talk about injuries first and foremost. Now, Lindor is going on the IL. This makes me very sad. He has a right oblique strain. And then DeGrom, all of a sudden, he has right forearm tightness again. I thought he was just going to miss one start. No, he's actually going on the IL. So in the last 24 hours, you have Lindor on the IL, Jacob DeGrom on the IL. And then this crazy swing after Tyler Megill or Megill, I don't know how to say his last name. He goes six shutout innings, but the Pirates, they storm all the way back, and Jacob Stallings, he brings back Ed Luz Diaz. He was not Edwin yesterday, obviously, because he lost, but again, how am I supposed to blame Diaz? How did Jacob Stallings hit this ball out the park? I mean, honestly, it was such a good pitch and such a weird swing that Edwin thought it was going to be a pop-up, as evident by him pointing to the sky. Um, 
Yeah, it was a walk-off Grand Slam, Edwin. Moving on over to the second and final walk-off from yesterday. That one actually came in game number two of the doubleheader between the Twins and the Tigers. So let's talk about game one real quick. We have the Tigers beating the Twins one to nothing. A very boring game. You have Robbie Grossman hitting a leadoff home run. And that was it from Charlie Barnes of the Twins and also for both teams as the bullpen for the Tigers don't allow a single hit. And Funkhauser has been dominant. He strikes out the side and Gregory Soto, he saves it in the final inning. And then in game number two, a key Akil, hold on, Akil, the bad man, Badu, sorry, I don't even know. He clears the bases on his fifth triple already, so he is number one in all of the American League. He's either tied with Shohei Otani, or he now has the sole possession. Five triples already for a guy that doesn't even have 250 at-bats. He's hitting 714 with the bases loaded this year. Then you have Josh Donaldson and friends grabbing the lead back, but then Scope ties it up, and Miggy delivers on some bad defense from the Twins, which is funny because Andrelton Simmons was playing shortstop. And that dude, we all know, is a defensive wizard, so it was just just some miscommunication between Gordon and Simmons and Miggy. He gets a walk off. A couple teams that put up nine runs yesterday. We have the Braves and the Dodgers. Let's talk about Atlanta first and foremost because Freddie Freeman, he's hitting like 900 over the last month. And then Ozzy Albies drives in Freeman on this RBI double. And Max Freed, oh my goodness, he goes the other way for a two RBI double. And newcomer Jack Peterson goes 415 feet off a lefty. So a little bit of lefty lefty crime right there. And Freddie hits a monster shot. This home run. Run. I mean, geez, that ball had a family, Freddie. He does not care. Speaking of not caring, Max Fried went three for three yesterday. And oh yeah, he threw seven shutout innings with seven strikeouts and one walk. That was one of the best performances I've seen all year from any player. And then the Dodgers also put up nine runs. Max Muncy, I think, drove in five of them. We have Max Muncy driving in Mookie Betts. And then Mookie Betts later in the game hits his 14th home run and has a 141 OPS plus in a down season. That's how good Mookie Betts is. Later on in the game, Muncy does it again by driving in Mookie Betts and AJ Pollock hits homer number 13 for Walker Bueller who was sensational you have eight strikeouts in seven innings for Walker and then you have Muncie and Turner making it nine runs this was capped off by a 470 foot bomb from Mr. Max Muncie as he was coming off his all-star selection and Betts had four extra base hits but unfortunately he left the game with a right hip injury the Angels versus the Mariners you have David Fletcher hitting a double in the first inning so he actually is second all-time for a hit streak for an Angels franchise. I don't want to talk about it in depth because I do not want to jinx it. So if he beats it, we'll go ahead and talk about it in depth. So he has another one later on in the game to make it 3 nothing. And then Taylor Ward, as well as Jack Merrifield, they make sure that the Angels do not give up a lead as Taylor Ward all of a sudden has eight home runs and 30 RBIs. David Fletcher, a third double on the night, caps off a five RBI day. And I just want to mention that Mitch Hanniger, he now has 22 home runs and 58 RBI. So he is kind of carrying the Mariners offense right now because because Jared Kelnick has been really bad. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Cleveland versus the A's. Another exciting game that almost was blown by the Cleveland bullpen. So you have Cleveland going up 2-1. to one, And then out of nowhere, a bases loaded situation turns into a double play. And then a fly out. So Cal Quantrill, he got very lucky in the bottom of the fifth. Framil Reyes hits his 15th home run and now has 40 RBIs and 181 at-bats. That is nuts. Classe, after blowing a lead and a save the day before, he has a clean eighth inning. And then James Karen Shack almost blows it himself, but he shuts it down as Cleveland wins 3-2. The Cubs, a close game as well. They beat the Diamondbacks 4-2 as Nick Ahmed and Josh Rojas to make it 2-0 for the Diamondbacks. And Zach Gallon was really good. 5 and 2 thirds with 7 strikeouts. Just unfortunately, old man Soria. Yeah, he allows a 2-run shot to Wilson Contreras to put them up 4-2. And Craig Kimbrell dominates for his 21st save of the year. The Cubs are all of a sudden back to a 500 record and they've won two games in a row. So are they a good baseball team? Are they all of a sudden motivated by the fact that they're trading away players and they don't want their friends to leave them? Is that the case? The Brewers and the Reds, you have both starting pitchers actually showing up yesterday. Luis Castillo and the other guy, I can't remember his name. I am so sorry, Brewers fans. But combined, they only allowed one earned run on 16 strikeouts in just under 12 innings pitched. Jonathan India, he comes in huge in the 8th inning and ties it up. But then Luis Urias, he grabs the lead back in the 10th. 
only to have Tyler Stevenson of the Reds tie it up yet again, but then Yelich starts a three-run rally in the 11th inning for Milwaukee, and they win the game 7-4. to four. The Brewers are six games ahead of anyone in first place, and to be honest with you guys, I don't see them slowing down anytime soon. The White Sox dismantled Houston yesterday. Houston has been playing some iffy baseball lately. Maybe they just got tired from winning so many games in a row a few weeks ago. You have Zach Collins and Tim Anderson going yard, and then Jake Berger and Tim Anderson make it 4 to nothing right before Gavin Sheets hits a two-run shot. He has been so clutch for them to begin his career. Jose Abreu, even in a down season after winning MVP, still has 16 home runs and 69 RBIs. Jake Berger, his first ever MLB home run is 460 feet. And Giolito, he goes the distance, nine innings, one earned run on eight strikeouts as he throws a complete game. The Cardinals versus the Giants. Molina moves into fourth place all time for the most starts by a catcher. You have Tyler O'Neill going the other way for his six. You have Tyler O'Neill going the other way for his 16th home run. And then Kim, who has not allowed a run in 23 innings. He goes six shutout yesterday as Paul Goldschmidt, he's heating up lately with a 417 batting average and four home runs in a 12 game hitting streak. And then Reyes, he comes in for his 21st save of the year, but he has began his career going 23 for 23 in save opportunities that ties an MLB record. So make sure you guys pay attention to the next Cardinals game. And the last but not least, the Orioles, they beat up the Royals yesterday as Brady Singer was a victim of death by a thousand cuts. As Baltimore, they score seven runs without a single extra base hit. Now, Kansas City, they tried to make the comeback, but the Baltimore bullpen, they shut it all the way down. As Baltimore, they went eight to four. Both of these teams suck. All right, everyone, well, that does it for today's MLB recap. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe. We do this every single day. Don't forget to use code Fuzzy on SeatGeek to save yourself 20 bucks off your entire order. And also, to anyone that was affected one more time in D.C., my thoughts are with you guys. Stay safe and enjoy this day in MLB history. What is wrong with people? Popped up and playable. Gracious.